Hi, everybody. Welcome to our DSSYO 2020-2021 season orientation session. I wish we could see you all right now. It'd be so exciting to see all your faces, but I hope you're all out there. Please feel free to um, put questions into the chat box. Uh, we will see those. And if you have questions, um, we will answer them by the end of the session. And if you just want to say hi to each other, that's fine also. So this evening, we're going to just get an overview of the of the season and what it's going to look like in our new format. And um, then just go over some of the policies and procedures and hear a little bit from each of our um, conductors and, um, and our executive director as well. And then um, at the end, we'll answer as many questions as possible. All right. So obviously, we have a big challenge ahead of us, but we also have a big opportunity ahead of us as well. And um, the more we get into planning this season, the more excited we get. At first, we were like, oh, no, how can we even approach this? And now we're like, well, wow, this we could do this and we could do this and we could do this. And so I think it's going to be an exciting season for everybody. Uh, our main goals for the program are much the same as ever. We we really want to develop our sense of community as a program and as each orchestra. And of course, we want to develop mu our musicianship. Uh, that's always the goal of uh, the program and provide opportunities for creative expression and uh, collaboration. Now, collaboration usually happens in a very um, natural way when we're sitting in rehearsals together, but we can't exactly do that this time. So our technology is going to provide us the opportunity to do some of that this year. So we'll be working on uh, listening, analyzing our music. Uh, we will do lots of playing. And a new element this year will be recording. We'll end up recording quite a bit. So the technology that will be used uh, this uh, season is Zoom for our sessions. We'll be um, meeting as each orchestra, as each ensemble. We will uh, come into a, a large Zoom session. And you will be getting these. Um, your login information over the course of this week, this coming week. And um, next week we will have, um, on the 21st, we will have our tech night is what we're calling it. Everybody will log in. We'll do a few exercises to make sure everybody's system is set up well. And, um, and then if everything's working well for you, it's going to be a relatively short session next week. Uh, and if you're having any difficulties, we will just stay with you um, and, and help to solve them. And if some of those difficulties take longer than uh, next Monday night to solve, then we'll solve them throughout the week. We want to have everybody up and running by the 28th. So um, next week, the rehearsal or the rehearsal, <laughs> the sessions are going to be staggered. Uh, we will start each orchestra um, at 45 minute intervals and I'll give you all that information in the emails that will come out this week. And so um, just be expecting that you won't necessarily start exactly at 630. We'll start Symphonia uh, first and then we will do Concert Orchestra and Youth Symphony um, and throw a percussion ensemble in there somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then um, the other technology that we're going to use this uh, this year is um, an online digital audio um, workstation called Soundtrap. Some of you may have played around with this already on your own. I know that Dr. Jones has used it quite a bit already, and um, so we'll be exploring that. We have some pretty exciting things that we'll talk about a little later um, that that's going to allow us to do. And um, we will be distributing music to you through Google Drive, um, through uh, Google Docs, and um, and our librarian and DSSYO assistant, Kristen. Kristen, give us a wave down there. <laughs> she will be helping us to do all of that. And um, then we will also have a portal that will serve as a um, a source uh, to coordinate all the information, the most updated uh, schedule information and links to any uh, 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 things that are important for you to, to know during the year. So um, all of that uh, will be um, in emails. Um, any time of 
a video tutorial will help. We'll do a quick video tutorial and send that out as a link um, in an email. So we're going to try to assist you in any way to make this work because we know that this is, you know, a little bit challenging for everybody, um, including myself. So I'm learning a lot, which is pretty fun. Um, and I make a lot of mistakes. So, um, hey, we all do. So um, we are going to um, take a look right now at our policies and procedures. I sent it via email to everybody about an hour ago. And um, you have attached to that email a policies and procedures um, uh, document and then a schedule document. You know, before we do that, I'm going to just introduce everybody because I realized that I didn't do that. See? Mistake. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So joining us tonight, we have Mr. Ho Yin Kwok. Hi. Should I introduce myself? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm the uh, conductor of the Youth Symphony. Uh, my name is Ho Yin Kwok. Um, staying at home most of the time, but missing all of you very, very much. So nice to see all of you on YouTube. And we have Dr. Jones, our percussion ensemble director. Hello, everybody. It's um, really looking forward to this season. I know Ms. Sievers put in a lot of time um, in preparation for this, and I think it's it's going to be a really amazing musical experience and educational experience, and I can't wait to get started. Wonderful. Thank you. And we have Dr. Aldridge, our Symphonia program coach and coordinator. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very excited. I'll be working with a lot of you, and I'm going to primarily be working with Symphonia, and I'll also probably get to visit uh, Concert Orchestra and uh, the Youth Symphony as well. But I think in this time of a um, little bit different and weirdness, I think we have something really incredible. And I think the Seaver has done an amazing job and we're all uh, get to explore this all together. So I'm looking forward to working with you all. Thank you, Dr. Aldridge. And we have Kristen Sandy, who is our DSSYO Administrative Assistant and also the librarian for the, the DSSO and the DSSYO. She has a huge job. How are you hey tonight? Everyone. Um, so I'm just going to be helping Melanie organize the Zoom sessions and I'll also be involved in music distribution and uh, tuition payment. So I'm excited to work with everyone this year. Thank you. And of course, I'm Melanie Seaver. Uh, you hear a lot from me all the time. So um, if you're new to the program, you will find that to be true. I'm the administrative director for the program and the concert orchestra uh, conductor. All right, so um, I'm going to take um, a minute here to share my screen. Okay, so if you have your policies and procedures document, you can follow along with this. And if you don't, you can follow along on the screen. I'm not going to read through everything on this document tonight, but I'm going to highlight a few things. Um, this, this document is written in a way that in case we are able to go back in person, uh, the policies and procedures apply to that as well, but there's certain things that are applicable only to the virtual program. So I just want to uh, talk down some of this. Um, so attendance is our first category. Attendance is always an important uh, thing to address. Um, it is super important. It may seem like your virtual participation is um, like nobody would know whether you're there or not because it's virtual, but it's that's so far from the truth. 
um, we we are going to be doing a lot of collaboration. Um, you're going to have the opportunity to give a lot of individual feedback, um, uh, and um, I think that um, the more you endeavor to participate, the more enjoyable um, it will be, and the more you'll get out of the program. Uh, and that that's how it is anyways when you're in person, um, but when you're virtual, it, it does take a little bit of, um, it takes a little bit more personal responsibility to really make it work. We really all um, bring things to the table here and we will all benefit the most if everybody chooses to show up regularly and participate. So uh, please plan ahead and make sure that you're, um, that you're available for these sessions. It should be even a little bit easier than other years because we will not be rehearsing for two, two hours and 45 minutes on a Monday night. We will have sessions that range between 60 and 90 minutes at most. So um, it's a little bit fatiguing to do things in a virtual manner. It requires a different type of concentration. And we are all getting a lot of screen time this year. And we just want to make sure that we use our time well and um, and uh, really uh, focus on what we need to for the period of time that will be uh, in our sessions. OK, so if you do need to be absent, please let us know. Please um, send an email to the youth orchestras. Um, email address. Um, you can also leave a message at um, the, the phone number that's listed in here. Um, it's important because in our collaborative um, assignments that we'll be having, it's um, it, you may need to be notified of, of certain things if you've missed uh, a rehearsal. So um, if you just let us know that you're going to need to, that we can plan ahead, or if you have missed please follow up with us um, so that we can uh, keep you on track and help the uh, collaboration amongst everybody go keep going. Um, cancellation of rehearsal due to hazardous weather. Now, I don't think we're going to have any of that. <laughs> so um, not unless we end up going back in person. Uh, and at that point, then we will address that as it comes up. But. I, I used to homeschool my, my son. I know some of you are homeschooled and that's the one thing he would complain about is he never got any snow days. <laughs> so uh, care of music, we are gonna be uh, distributing music virtually. Um, so you will be getting a link uh, to a file and you will be able to download that and either use it on a device or to print it out yourself. If you are unable to print it and would like to, if you are unable to get that, please contact us and we will find a way to get printed music to you. When you show up on your sessions on Monday nights, please have your instrument available um have a pencil um and have your music available and important uh this year is to make sure that you're in a location in your house where you won't be interrupted um where it's quiet enough uh to participate without a lot of sound bleeding through I'm, there, there's going to be some sound i mean in a house it's hard to be completely silent but but uh, all, of, all of these things are important to, is to make sure you set yourself up well for, for success and for you to be able to enjoy it and for everybody else to be able to enjoy um, uh, participating without too much extra sound um, interrupting. Um, we're going to skip this next section of in-person protocol. We'll skip this next section of standard concert dress. If and when we end up doing uh, virtual recordings, uh, we will discuss this and see if, if we want to uh, dress in a particular way for those. Okay, so down to the benefits, one of the extra benefits of your membership is um, you are eligible for um, tickets to the, uh, to the, the adult orchestra, to the DSSO. Uh, however, this year it's going to be um, uh, dependent on whether there is uh, room for this. So 
uh, there's going to be very limited audiences and a very limited number of performances to begin with. So um, as is available, we'll let you know. Um, and uh, it's just an unfolding situation. None of us knows exactly what's going to happen or how it's going to look at this point. So we just have to go with the flow and um, see how that unfolds. And then this next section here, um, tuition waivers and reductions. I'm going to have um, I'm going to have uh, Kristen come on and just talk a little bit about um, about uh, payments and and whatnot. But I just wanted to point out at the bottom of this uh, at this policies and procedures document there is program contact information. So these are all of our email addresses and the main youth orchestra's uh, phone number. So um, I am going to, let's see here. Kristen, would you like me to bring up the other form at this point? Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Oops. Okay. So um, if you've sent us your acceptance forms, um, you should receive an invoice shortly in the mail if you haven't already. Um, and that will include this remittance form that you can see here um, to help you know how much to pay for your tuition. Um, and there is also a financial aid form in there if you need that as well. So um, you can pay in full by credit card or check, or you can set up a monthly payment plan. Um, and if you need help paying tuition, please do fill out that financial aid form. There's limited funding available, but we need that form in order to be able to help you pay. So. And I'd like to point out here also the multi-student discounted tuition we have in this section. I would like to also point out that we have 20 families in our program who have two or more students in the program. That's awesome. Anything else on this, Kristen, that we need to point um, out? Yeah, I think the financial aid form, and if you need to set up a payment plan, that needs to be done by uh, October 1st. And if you're paying in full, then that is due October 31st. All right, great. And if you have questions at any point on any of this, um, please put them in the chat and we will make sure we address all the questions um, at the at the end here. Okay, I'm going to stop this share and I'm going to run over to the, look at me running. <laughs> I'm going to run over to the, um, schedule here. So included in your packet with your membership acceptance uh, letter, uh, there was a schedule on the back of the policies and procedures. Now, I put this schedule in here to give you an idea of how we're going to be um, rotating uh, the focus of the, of the uh, of each session on, you know, consecutive Mondays. Now, this is subject to change. This is just an idea of how it's going to look. I have this listed through December because at that point we're going to be um, reevaluating whether we can do anything in person or not. If we need to continue virtually, we will continue in much the same way. So um, we will have uh, full group sessions where we have the whole orchestra meeting, we will have large sectional type uh, meetings where we break out into um, maybe strings and winds and discuss things. We may or we may, those may also be full group sessions again as well. We just have to see how things go and um, what we have week to week for this. And then um, the most important aspect of it is that we will have uh, sectionals for every single instrument group every three weeks. Our first sectional um, evening will be on Monday, October 19th. 
and um, whatever your instrument is, you will have a specialist meeting with you for that se session uh, to work on the music uh, that, that you're working on in the large ensemble uh, to, to develop specific um, uh, skills um, and techniques. And um, many of these coaches are going to be uh, DSSO members. And the fact that we are virtual really opens up a whole lot of opportunity for um, our, our DSSO players who don't live in the area to participate in this. So it's pretty exciting uh, to do that. And then um, for the Symphonia program, um, we are going to have um, a, a special approach this year. And uh, when uh, Dr. Aldridge talks in a little while, um, I will be, um, we shall, she'll, let us in on that. And then I just wanted to point out on the schedule at this point um, that we have on the schedule potential concerts. We don't know yet whether those will be able to be done. Um, we are hoping maybe we will get one actual in-person concert in. We may or may not. Um, whether we do or not, we are going to have uh, projects and uh, virtual um, opportunities for perform performances um, and uh, it will be you'll have a lot to show for your year of work uh, in this program this year so i'm going to stop this share and i'm going to then let's see here All right, I'm going to bring our conductors back in. Hi, everybody. So as we've been talking about the program this year, we've gone through all sorts of ideas of how it was going to work. We have some very successful models that we've been looking at from programs that occurred over the summer. And then um, as we've decided on the various technologies that we're going to use, um, we have realized that we have opportunities that exist only because uh, we are doing this virtually and being able to use these technologies. So um, I'm just going to go around the circle here and have everybody sort of uh, um, uh, just talk about how you see the, the program um, unfolding for your uh, particular area. Dr. Aldridge, do you want to start? Sure, I would be happy to. Can you hear me okay? Because I think for some reason my internet might be slow. I, so, can, hear, I can hear you perfectly. Okay, great. Awesome. So um, as Ms. Siever was talking about, we are taking a little bit of a different approach to Symphonia, and I'm very excited to be involved with this. And it's going to give us a chance to do some really great one-on-one -on -one work. So I will be working with the violins and several of my colleagues from the symphony. We'll also uh, be working with the violas, cellos, and basses. And I think I neglected to say, um, if you don't know, I'm concert master of the Duluth Superior Symphony Orchestra, the DSSL. So I just wanted to get that in there because I realized I did not put that in my introduction. Um, so that's my, that's my tie into this, plus I love to teach. And so what we're going to be able to do is do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work in um, in sectional. So the violence will be with me. And we're going to also, while we may at some point get together and do bigger group work and orchestral work, we're going to talk about, um, you know, kind of the fundamentals of playing and, and making really great sound and working on all of that stuff. We'll also talk about orchestral play and what it means to be an orchestral string player. The other thing that we're going to be able to do is do some violin only specific work and viola only and have viola choir and cello choir and violin choir. And I'm super, super excited about this because when I was your age, I was heavily involved in a program that did very much the same thing. And it's some of my fondest memories um, of being able to not just do orchestral stuff, but also do like 
violin choir and viola choir and cello. Well, I didn't do the, well, I did do viola choir, but I didn't do cello choir. Um, so that's kind of how we're taking this. It's going to be a really unique uh, approach and you will get the chance to work with some really awesome musicians and teachers. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's bring uh, let's bring Dr. Jones into the mix here. Dr. Jones, this this presents some unique challenges for <laughs> percussion ensemble, doesn't it? It sure does. Um, and I'm dealing with this uh, with my students at the university as well as far as um, how to creatively do percussion, where we're limited on instruments and what we have access to. So. Uh, um, one benefit, I guess, as the percussionist might know, is that we're not going to be stuffed in a very small room altogether trying to make music. So we'll have a little more elbow room individually. Uh, but that being said, we're going to continue um, the goals that, that are set up for the percussion ensemble, which is um, not only to become more familiar and more adept at orchestral playing, um, but also personal technique. And, and in some ways, we're going to be able to do a lot of things with just improving our, our individual playing abilities, especially on, on snare drum and, and uh, hand chops uh, that we don't always get to do as much uh, during the year. And then finally, we're going to continue our, our commitment to percussion ensemble and um, group music making. It's just going to look a little bit different. I already have the, the perfect piece selected for that, uh, given what we um, might have or what, what we might not have in our homes uh, that I'm really excited about. So uh, we're going to be doing some recording, like you talked about, Miss Siever, uh, for the orchestra as well with Soundtrap and uh, being able to really analyze uh, what we're doing as musicians and bring some some excellent sounds together and grow as musicians. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And I will bring Mr. Kwok on. Hi. Um, before I start talking about the program, I just want everybody to really recognize the work that uh, Miss Siever had put in. You know, the leadership and the determination and all the creative ideas that she, you know, really brought to the table. It's really hard because um, uh, nobody had real experience, and there's no book you know or you know history telling us what to do and and we're literally re recreating the whole program you know and which is an exciting thing and i consider it lucky because you know not too long ago none of this would be possible you know there would be no youtube there's no none of this technology would be possible so i'm just grateful and feeling um very uh lucky and excited that you know this is possible so i want to welcome all the new um, students and welcome back the old ones you know i really miss you very very much and also thank you for all of your patience you know the parents and all your faith in the organization and especially the passion of making music you know nothing can stop us you know we'll, we'll keep making music you know through you know anything so i just want to present to you the uh, um youth symphony I, my goal is to replicate as much as possible the ensemble experience uh, while exploring other opportunities to learn different aspects of music through you know technology and collaboration. And I as much as possible, you know, if we get to choose, this won't be how we want to do it, you know, on online, you know. But I want to, as much as possible, make this not a compromise because, you know, I don't want us to feel like, oh, you know, we can't do it in person. It, it, there's no in-person rehearsal. So this is the second best thing to do. Um, as much as possible, though there are some adjustments, I want to bring um, this opportunity to explore the untapped area. There are things that we didn't get a chance to do. Now we have a chance to do. And, and, and we really should look at it in a very, very positive, you know, lens, you know, and, and, and be excited about it. And these aspects I've thought about it, it includes like, we have more time to really delve into like uh, the, the historical background of music. So in the big groups, we can have, you know, lectures we can talk about and discuss about what music means, you know, what music means in the past and what how it's different today and how uh, the same piece of music is composed, what the process is and how it takes shape 
and that adds meaning uh, not only playing the music but also listening and appreciating the music we can all we also would do some um uh, oral analysis through examining recordings and performance practices and you know um and that is as much as possible you know during you know when it there, sorry my 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 mouth is going faster than my brain that often happens those who know me will know uh, it happens all the time so in the in a natural rehearsal setting you know all we're trying to do is get things done right we want to get it in tune we get the ensemble together but we really don't have the time to listen to other performances and and explore why is it good you know why is this performance better than the other one what does this performance um what is it special that it touches me you know and we can explore that and in a way it develops our critical thinking it develops us to be better musician uh, also the use of technologies there's um we talked about um zoom and also soundtrap i think um maybe some of you might have question about what soundtrap exactly is we can talk more about at the q a session but also we offer more individual attentions through the small groups the big group and then the full groups you know there's uh, different levels layers of attention for ensemble experience um the specifics that we're going to do and it's it's ever evolving as we trying to you know find out how it's going to look like and keep refining the program is to um we're going to play through selected recordings at home so you're going to play along with the recording and then you're going to record the audio of um your practice you know during uh, in between our meetings and then submit it to soundtrap a wonderful software that can recreate this ensemble experience we'll explain later and then we can review evaluate and comment it during the group session and and we have multiple sessions with the full with the large with the small and all the wonderful thing about this is after you recorded it unlike in the rehearsal that you can't go back and listen to it or you know i played wonderfully the first time and then now you ask me to play again i don't play as wonderfully anymore so you're criticizing things that i was able to do, I just had a slip. You know, we can go back and keep reviewing our progress. So we can explore ways to improve and elevate the standards in different ways and and, and to train ourselves to listen, not to ourselves, but to other people, um, to critically think about, you know, the process of music and to self-improve. And I think that these are all wonderful things um, that we can do. One more advantage is that at the end, we can collect all these audio samples and put together a virtual performance with edited video. So at the end, we do have a product. You know, it might be, not be a, uh, um, uh, a product that is um, what we expect, and it could be surprise. I mean, I'm, I'm very you know, excited to be surprised, but at the end, we'll have a product you know uh, that can um, as much as possible replace you know a live concert and hopefully who knows next year we you know we go live you know and everybody's happy uh and and also we will have a documentation of the growth of the youth symphony from the beginning to the end and as you, we look back to the whole documentation of the program i think that will be something that we can proud of so i'm as you can tell um very excited i can't wait to start now so thank you thank you very much well you can see how fortunate i am to have these wonderful colleagues uh here so um so appreciative of their enthusiasm and uh, their willingness to take this on and find really enriching ways to to um to let this season unfold uh, so we're really excited about that. So similarly with concert orchestra, I plan to do much of uh, what Mr. Kwok was speaking of. And um, we are also looking into having uh, special guests um, and um, more to be uh, said later on that. Um, and then um, we are also um, looking into undertaking a, a program-wide um, uh, project that will um, allow us to to have um, some really um, creative ex expression that um, we don't normally get a chance to have. We'll, we'll all be um, 
in the have a hand in uh, composing um, a large scale project. So, um, so these are things that we have uh, on the plate and on the table, or however we say that. And um, we are, of course, figuring out the details as we go along because we just don't know enough to know what we don't know yet. So um, we have lots of great ideas, lots of good solid plans, and we still have things that we don't know. And that's okay, because we will figure it out and we'll figure that all out together. And I think this will be a pretty exciting year. I'm going to actually bring on uh, uh, Brandon Van Weyenberg, who is our executive director for the DSSO. And um, he just joined us here. Hi, Hello, Brandon. How are you? Where and are you? we are doing great. Who is this? This is my dog, Barley. Can I say hi? <laughs> very cute. Very cute. So, Brandon, thank you for joining us tonight. I know you've had a super busy day and evening. You've just come back from, a, from another event. Um, so uh, I would love to uh, just have you address our our members. Of course. Well, of course, Melanie. And um, if several of you might, might remember me from almost a year ago saying hello for the first time on my first day as executive director. Um, and it's my pleasure to serve as the executive director of the DSSA. This is just sort of my second year. And um, as Melanie knows and Ho Yin, Aaron, Brett, and Kristen, like the DSSYO is one of the hallmark things of the of the Blue Superior Symphony Orchestra, and I am talking to everyone everywhere about it. Even at the event lab tonight, I was I was at uh, just shouting the praises of the fact that we are doing a digital youth orchestra, and people couldn't wrap their heads around a digital youth orchestra. I'm so excited and, and thrilled to be able to be a part of what you are doing here tonight and for the, for the next several weeks. Um, what we are doing here is, you know, in the midst of all this COVID and everything else is, is tough, really. But the fact that you are going to be practicing your instrument, leading towards a, a final performance is amazing. And thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you so much for being a part of continuing music in the Twin Ports and being a part of the DSSO. We need you just as much as we, as you need us, and we're so excited to be part of your musical journey. And if there's anything that I myself as a director can do, please feel free to reach out to me. But as someone who studied music for a long time, congratulations for being here. Congratulations for being a part of this. You have excellent instructors, and I'm so excited to hear what you're gonna produce in the next few months. Thank you very much for that. Um, I, I'd like to just let everybody know how incredible it is to have Brandon as our as our executive director. Pretty much every idea I have come up with, he responds with, great, let me figure out a way to pay for that. <laughs> so, he is so supportive of our program and so enthusiastic that um, I just, I'm so, so grateful, um, again, not only for uh, my musical colleagues, but um, for his support of the program in, and its role in the greater um, organization of the DSSO. And um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Melanie. And just so you guys know, I'm in my home office. Over here, you see my music degree. You know, the, the little pink tassel is my music diploma. Uh, it's actually for vocal. So um, the reason that I'm working with the youth orchestra is, you know, and orchestras in general is, uh, even though I'm a vocalist, I wanted to be an instrumentalist for many, many years. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find the instrument that I really wanted to perform. So the fact that you are in this youth orchestra, no, from me, I am jealous of you um, and what you're doing. And Ho Yin and Aaron and Brett and Kristen and Melanie, you guys are doing yeoman's work. And every time I see you and your students on stage, I applaud you because it's something that I personally cannot do. So thank you so much. 
Thank you, thank you for that. So um, I'm going to bring us over into, I don't know what this looks, here we go. Wow, Whoa. that's pretty cool. <laughs> so um, if there's any, I don't see really any questions. Christian, did you see, Kristen, Christian, <laughs> Kristen, did you see any actual um, questions in the chat? There's a lot of great hellos and, uh, and connections here, um, which is awesome. Love seeing you all on here. Um, but um, if there's, I don't see any particular questions in there. There's okay. No so yet. does anybody um, on our panel here have uh, any thoughts that have come up as we've been uh, talking here that you'd like to um, express? We'll just give a few more minutes for people to write a question in if you have it. And um, if we end up with no questions, that's great. Maybe that means that we've done a great job at answering everything. And maybe it doesn't mean that. Uh, we do have a question from Kate Gish. Um, she asks, do we have a set time for Youth Symphony next week? That will be coming out in the email, but I expect that Youth Symphony will be the last 45 minutes. So it will be, um, it'll be at eight o'clock is what I'm, is that's how that's coming together in my, in my mind right now. A lot of stuff is still in my mind. <laughs> So, yes, I think eight o'clock, I think that we will start um, 6.30 for the Symphonia program members. And then um, at 7.15, we will do the concert orchestra and we'll insert percussion ensemble in there according to what Dr. Jones would prefer. Okay, then there are a couple of questions about um, the length of Great. the Zoom sessions. Um, all right, this is one here. Great. Um, so uh, for it, it's going to vary somewhat um, the sessions depending on uh, what the focus of the session is on a night. It will be. Um, I would say between 45 minutes and 90 minutes and I'm going to I'm going to just go out on a limb here. Dr. Aldridge, you can correct me um, if you have plans other than this. But for Symphonia, um, I believe that the sessions will not be 90 minutes at any point. Correct. I, have, I agree with that. Great. OK. So I'm guessing for you, Symphony, we could have up to that point, maybe 75 minutes, something such as that. And then for concert orchestra, I'm going to say about 60 minutes, give or take a bit. And uh, percussion ensemble, Dr. Jones? Uh, right around an, the hour mark is, is what I'm aiming yeah. for. I, I found through um, through my work over um, last spring and through the summer here that that's about what we can take. <laughs> Not as teachers, but as as individuals who are learning in this format. So um, we will make things targeted. Yes. And I also want to say like we, um, just because of the, the format of this, we also expect the students to do a little bit extra work during, you know, in between uh, the weeks. So, you know, that would be in place of, you know, the time that uh, we are not meeting together. So you will have a shorter meeting session, but and then you will dedicate more time into recordings and do all the stuff. You, hopefully, as we, you know, both get familiarized with the technology, that time would get shorter Great. and shorter. And then I see here, um, Kaden, hi, Kaden. Um, when are we going to get our music to start practicing? Uh, that will be coming out within the next um, week and a half or so. Um, Zoom question. <laughs> Let's see. We need our instruments tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow, right. Okay, so um, if you mean by next Monday, um, it wouldn't hurt to have them. You could try uh, playing, but mostly we're looking at just trying to make um, the, the technology work. Um, what we 
what we can do next week is do all with voices um, instead of having to have instruments. But if you'd like to try it with your instrument, uh, that would be great as well. Um, we'll have some changes to audio settings to make and, and things like that. But we'll talk everybody through one step at a time on that type of a thing. Um, if I didn't answer that question, can you type more uh, in at the end of the chat? Okay. What format do we get the, the music? Yes, they will be PDF uh, mm -hmm. files, but if you don't have the ability to print those off, um, we can do that and uh, find a way to distribute that to you, either via mail or picking them up from the office. Any other uh, thoughts on that, uh, Kristen? Yeah, so um, right now we're thinking we'll be sending everyone a Google Drive link to get your music. Um, that will be via email and hopefully we'll get those up on the portal as well. Um, and so, yeah, if you don't have access to a printer, please reach out to me or Melanie and we will mail you paper copies. Thank you. All right. This is a great question from Olya. Is there a certain microphone or camera that we need on our computers? Uh, no, you can go crazy and, uh, <laughs> and and do as much as you want from that aspect but the the camera and the uh, microphone that's in yes like Dr. Aldridge there <laughs> uh, the camera and that uh, is on your device and the and the the record the uh, microphone that's on your device already should suffice um, we can do a, a lot um, with that, even even in recording, if it isn't ideal, we can clean up a lot of things when we get into the the digital audio um, workstation, the DAW. So um, so don't worry about that aspect. If you start using it and you find that you just can't stand it, then um, we can have a discussion and make recommendations. But I think you should be fine with with your device as it is. Um, what music do you think we will be playing? Good question. Anybody uh, want to go for that? A uh, tough question. You know, at this time you ask me, I really don't know. But what I'm can, I, I can guarantee you is that you know we're now at the process of looking at the roster and seeing the strings of the orchestra, and we want to for sure you know highlight that strength you know in the orchestra and make everybody have opportunity to shine you know and. Also, um, it, it, this uh, situation also gave us a great opportunity that we didn't have before. You know, let's say if we have uh, uh, one oboe and there are three oboe parts, we can have all three parts. You know, it's not a problem anymore. So in a way, the repertoire range is wider. You know, it's it's more exciting. So uh, I can't tell you what specifically, you know, specifically what music we're going to play, but I can tell you it's going to involve everybody. Everybody has an opportunity to shine. It's not boring, and and we'll like it for a while. What Ho Yin said. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for for concert orchestra, I am. Uh, I want to bring in a local composer um, and uh, we'll be doing one of his pieces um, and uh, having him involved in helping us interpret it and then um, maybe having him involved in a further project um, beyond that. So um, uh, without going into the details of that yet because I'm still um, I'm still uh, making all those details official. So, <laughs> so uh, there's that and then um, uh, I have two other pieces that are on the table. I just have to wait and see how the roster um, settles to some degree and just see what we've got going on. So, um, yeah, I know that's very unspecific. I'm sorry that, that it wasn't a more direct answer. <laughs> Dr. Aldridge, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, we're going to be um, exploring. At first, we're going to, at least I can speak for the violins, we're going to be looking at some interesting um, repertoire, including some Bartok duos, which are really super fun. Um, there are um, some uh, duos by Stanley Fletcher and also uh, 
by uh, Tartini. It's around, there's uh, lots of different avenues that we're gonna go. So we're gonna explore um, so all kinds of different repertoire from different periods of music. And then that will allow us to talk about that and to do everything from Baroque to classical to romantic to uh, 20th century. Very cool. And I know Dr. Jones already, um, you already mentioned some of what you're going to do there. So if you feel like you want to add to that, that's great. If not, we'll move on. Uh, no, uh, a piece uh, for sure that we're going to do is by Christopher Dean. It's called Scavenger Music and it allows uh, percussionists to be able to explore sound soundscapes with what they have in their own home. Um, and it's really, really cool and creative uh, composition based on that, but it allows, uh, it gives us some flexibility, but it still has really high musical integrity. So I'm, I'm excited to get going on that. That sounds like fun. Can I be part of that? You bet. Awesome. All right. So um, let's see, Lynn just clarified by tomorrow, she meant next week. And uh, that's what I assumed. So that's great. Thank you. Um, all right. Great question. How will we figure out seating? Um, so Hannah is a member of U Symphony. So um, Mr. Kwok, would you like to take that? Yep. Um, the advantage of uh, the virtual is that we don't have to figure out seatings. Um, well, not really, but to an extent, you know, like, uh, so, I mean, it, 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 it really, uh, orchestra has a really bad, um, I, I won't say a bad tradition because it's not a tradition, it's just a need, you know, like somebody needs to sit, sit somewhere, you know, like if somebody sit in front, you can't, can't have everybody sit in front, somebody will need to sit behind. Um, uh, but the but that's I mean that gives you an impression that some people are important and some people are not and which is like so not true it's just like completely not true like I'm 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 passionate about you know fighting it so so the good thing about this is that you know you have one square on my screen and the other person also have one square you know the other person doesn't get a bigger square or a smaller square so there is really no you know problem of you know, who's sitting in front, who's sitting behind, everybody's important. And that's a true reflection of the orchestra. However, there is, okay, so now you're telling me, okay, what about first and second violin, first trumpet and second trumpet, you know, uh, there is a need to assign that, you know, based on the strength and uh, the strength of each um, uh, players um, for the reason primary so that they don't have to practice so many parts you know, one player can't practice, you know, first oboe, second oboe, third oboe, and the English horn, you know. So that's the primary reason. But I know, you know, people, you know, musicians from the youth symphony, it's capable and totally willing and interested and cu curious that at times we can also switch parts. You know, there's really no limit to this. So how do we figure out seating? I think I'm going to first uh, figure out the section, in a more uh, conventional way. And then as we explore the repertoire, there might be changes. So, you know, uh, fasten your seatbelt, I guess. Yeah, the same for, for concert orchestra. Um, uh, in this in this format, it's, it's pretty egalitarian. And um, those who are stronger players will end up um, by nature of their playing, um, end up being uh, leaders within um, the recording, uh, within the discussions, um, and and whatnot. So uh, everybody pretty much has a chance to to participate in a in a uh, more visible way, I guess I would like to say, uh, in, in this format. So. Um, I know that seating matters when you're, I mean, I remember, I remember it mattered to me. Um, and then I also at some point along the way realized that no matter what I'm hired for, whether it's piccolo, third flute, second flute, or, or principal flute, um, there is a very specific set of um, duties and responsibilities in those parts. And each of those parts has to be performed in, in a team uh, effort and it has to be performed in um, a way that supports all of the other parts. And um, 
you know, they're all enjoyable and they all teach you something and they all make your other part playing stronger. So um, I think that um, if we look at it from that perspective, um, I think that we'll get a lot out of it. And Dr. Aldridge, it looks like you have something to say there. I would love to add something about string playing because I think we are kind of the culprits of wanting wanting the seating and the placement. I mean, and it's because we're not one on a part, we're an entire section. But what I can tell you is there is no easy chair, there is no lesser chair. It is just as difficult to play in the back of the symphony as it is the front. Every single chair is important and it's about coming together and making music. And yes, I was in the symphony growing up. We had, you know, the auditions and we waited to see what our placement. So I totally get it and I totally understand it. But now having done this for many, many years, I've sat in the first violence, I've sat in the second violence and I have had, and I've sat in the front and I've sat in the back and I have had wonderful, wonderful experiences in all the different places. And I have embraced the challenges that all of those places um, bring. So, and this is now, as uh, Mr. Kwok was saying, this is a whole new world. And in a way it's great because every, it, it just, um, kind of accentuates the importance of every individual, that you are all important, whether you're sitting in a section or whether uh, you're on a computer screen. So there you go. Awesome, thank you everybody. Okay, here's a very specific question. Um, how much low brass, brass do we have in concert orchestra? We have two beautiful tubas. We have a wonderful euphonium and a trombone, one trombone. So. We are actually looking um, if you have friends who want to uh, to join and you can encourage them because this is going to be an awesome experience um, to bring them in. And then again, if nobody else comes in, we have a wonderful section. Um, so that's who we have. Um, okay, let's see. What was the other online program? Um, Sound Trap is the name of it. S O U N D. T R A P as in Paul is the name of it. It's soundtrap.com. You can look it up and see what it's all about. Um, we have, um, we'll be doing the, the one that is geared towards education. So it allows us to do, uh, has particular features that allow us to collaborate in certain ways on that. Um, let's see. Yep, you got it, David. Thank you. Um, oh, let's see. How many members are there from outside of Duluth Superior? Good question. I don't have the exact number in my head right now, but I want to say that, um, are you, I'm not sure if you're including like, um, Hermantown and, and whatnot in Duluth, but I, I, I include that in Duluth. Sorry, Hermantown. <laughs> but um, I consider outside of Duluth, like um, up on the on the North Shore, up on the range, um, further out into, into Wisconsin, um, down into Cloquet and Moose Lake area. And we have um, quite a number of students uh, from those areas. Um, and I can find that out and actually get actual numbers on that um, and get back to you if you would like. Um, this is a great uh, suggestion. We could just have a giant circle and then everybody would be in front <laughs> or, or in back <laughs> or on the side. <laughs> and trap the poor audience in <laughs> yeah, That's a great idea. I like that. Okay, how many violins are there? Um, there are, I believe, about 16 in Youth Symphony, 14 in Concert Orchestra, and I don't have the final number for Symphonia. This has been changing the last couple days, um, so I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. There's between... Six and ten, <laughs> so <laughs> it's 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 in flux there. All right, uh, let's see. I 
Any other questions here? How many double reeds are there this year? There are two bassoons in Youth Symphony and one oboe in Concert Orchestra at present time. If you know anybody, encourage them to join. Double reeds are so scarce and so valuable. All right, how many woodmans? Um, okay, so in Youth Symphony right now, we have uh, three flutes, two bassoons, and one clarinet. In concert orchestra, we have um, four flutes, um, one oboe, um, no bassoons, and no clarinets. All right, so Amanda, you say that last year there were over 50 violinists in sixth grade. What school are you in? If you can uh, put it in there. So if there are 50 violinists that you know, invite them. Invite them to come. Superior. Wow. That's awesome. 50. That's incredible. Awesome, awesome. That must be Mrs. Matson's program, right? Horns, let's see. Sage is asking how many horns there are. Three in Youth Symphony and one horn in concert orchestra and one alto saxophone, which I often use as horn. Yes, and um, Kristen makes a great point. We will accept applications at um, <laughs> at any point and um, at any time somebody can join this year um, because of the format we really don't have much of a restriction as to the numbers of uh, students in, in any given section so this is a fantastic opportunity um, so um, let's see <laughs> so I'm not sure how somebody can ask this question <laughs> now, I think that all of us would say, why is flute the best instrument? <laughs> Everybody's shaking their head no. <laughs> why is cello the best instrument? It just is, is what Kate says. Great. <laughs> awesome. All right, am I missing anything? Any more questions? Any more comments from our panelists here? So back to the question about, um, back to the question about the, um, how many, are from outside. There's a, there's a, we have, we have somebody from Grand Marais. We have at least five others from outside of the Twin Ports, at least. There may be more than that, but yeah, that's great. Thank you, Kristen, for those numbers. All right. Anything else? Any other comments anybody would like to make? Observations? All right, everybody. It looks like um, we've come to the end of our orientation session. Um, uh, whoever is this right here, um, send me an email. Send youth orchestras an email and I'll give you some information on that. Awesome. See you guys next week. That's great. All right. Great. Thank you everybody for being on here tonight. Thank you to 
uh, all of our panelists. We are looking forward to this year so very much. And um, and here we are. We've launched the season. So um, we will see you next week for the tech session. Watch your uh, email uh, for the specific uh, login information. And um, let's let's do this. Good night. <laughs>